Hey everybody, this is the Digital PM, Mike Cristancho here to talk about Magento 2. Um, I'll be going through a lot of details here, but I figured the first place to start was with some background information on Magento 2, how it got started, and ultimately some insights that I have that maybe a few other people don't. So ultimately Magento 2 um, has been a long time coming, that's for sure. Um, it was released in November 17th of last year. Um, and I remember back in 2010, I believe it was, there was the first mention of Magento 2 and that it was supposed to be released by the end of 2011. Now, obviously that didn't happen and there's a lot of backstory there that I can go into over these tutorials. Um, but ultimately, um, the first beta was released November of 2014 um, and four years after the initial mention. So I think first and foremost, thanks for actually pushing this out the door. Um, it's been live for you know a couple months now um, in terms of going live to the public, general acceptance November of last year. Um, and there's been some ups, there's been some downs, but ultimately I'm, I'm happy that it's out. I'm thankful that it's out um, and there's been a lot of innovation already on the platform and a lot of excitement. So, you know, I, I kind of made reference to the fact that I have some inside knowledge. So um, I work with the solutions partner um, full time and I've done a lot of implementations and I have, you know, on a, on a good note, um, a good source within the Magento community told me that during eBay's reign, um, which ended relatively recently, um, there was zero lines of code laid down on Magento 2. So during eBay's tenure, they pretty much shuttered uh, the project and got nothing accomplished. So you can kind of see there's a big gap uh, between, between when they wanted to launch the site um, and when they wanted to launch the product uh, to now. And so that's pretty much why, and that, that's what I got from a good source uh, within the Magento camp. So ultimately that's what's going on, but you know, the, the benefit of Magento 2, 2 is, you know, first and foremost, the, the flexible architecture that it has, very similar to Magento 1. Um, it, it kept a lot of good stuff and then added on top of it. So anybody who's wrenched on the platform understands that Magento 1 was built, and then they kind of retrofitted an API to sit on top of that. Um, that has flipped this time. The API is the center of everything, and they built the platform around that uh, for more uh, stable performance and overall better performance. Uh, Magento is coming out of the box with a CSS preprocessor now. Um, I think they're using less. A lot of developers will use SAS, um, but ultimately it just means more synchronous processing power and more speed overall. Um, it uses modern technology um, like PHP 5.5 plus. Um, HTML5, CSS3, uh, MyQS 5.6, and that you know ends up being an issue for some people that are trying to run their site on you know shared platforms such as like HostGator or Bluehost, etc. Um, but ultimately, anybody who has an on-premise machine should be able to handle anything that Magento needs uh, around Magento 2. Uh, sim sim similar to Magento 1, it ships with a responsive theme out of the box, so instantly you can address that mobile concern that a lot of merchants have. Um, a lot of other UX things have been added and updated, such as integrated video, um, an Ajax add to cart, uh, new checkout features with PayPal that allows you to check out in a window instead of going off-site if you're using PayPal Express. You know, that's a cool new feature they rolled out at Imagine. Um, and, and ultimately, there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipe, so I'll get into the roadmap a little bit later on. Um, but Magento is looking forward, so I know there's going to be a big push for B2B as well uh, for all of you merchants that need those type services. Um, the brand new ad admin panel, you know, it's beautiful compared to what M1 looks like. Um, we'll get into that in future tutorials. We'll walk through all the details there on what you can expect and what you can look for. Um, ultimately, you know, what, you're, what you can expect is a lot more flexibility. So there's an admin table filter that you can use to show what information that your user needs to see. Um, product imports and exports are a lot quicker. You can create products a lot faster. Um, ultimately, it's just more efficient, and, and it looks beautiful. So M2 continues to focus on scalability and performance, same as M1. You know, if you're a retailer or merchant that you know needs some custom add-ons, etc., you know Magento is going to be the platform for you. If you're just selling Widget One and Widget Two, and you're just looking to get that out the door to the consumer, um, you know it might be a little bit much for you. In all honesty, so I, I think a lot of merchants come to Magento with the preconception that you know it's 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 more than they need, um, and it's maybe not enough. Um, you have the Oracle ATGs, you have kind of the big players in the space that offer e-commerce. Um, and Magento fits right in that kind of mid-market space. So from what I've seen from my project manager experience, 
um, is, is typically you'll see kind of five to 15 million um, is typical for enterprise edition. Uh, community edition will be anywhere between one and five million typically, um, even though I've seen sites that do quite a bit of revenue on community edition. So it's also a good option. Um, but ultimately, you know, M2 is focusing on that performance. That's really where they've tied their cart to, the, you know, the horse to the cart. Um, you know, they allow to, and their new pricing structure for enterprise, which I'll get into, you know, a little bit later on and, and not in too much depth here, but they don't charge per application instance anymore. So, you know, you can run pretty much Magento on, on 10 servers if you need to, if you're going to be on Shark Tank and you're going to have a lot of traffic, you can spread that out and load balance over 10 different servers. Whereas before you had to pay for each of those individual server applications um, and pay kind of a, an additional licensing fee, you no longer have to do that. So, you know, there, there's the con that Magento 2 now forces you to pay uh, depending on your revenue for the year. Um, and it kind of goes in tiers, but ultimately the flexibility there is that you can spin up an instance um, and, and almost guarantee that there's not as much site downtime because you don't have to worry about that influx of traffic and going down all the time. So there's pros and cons with both of those and depending on where you land, um, you know, it could be good or it could be bad. So uh, other features in Magento 2, um, similar to Magento 1, they're shipping with um, certain partners right out of the box. So Varnish is coming out of the box. That's a caching type. Um, PayPal, Braintree, uh, UPS, FedEx, all of the you know, shipping and payment partners are coming out of the box, and they're adding a couple more uh, for ease of use, especially for you know, international customers. So WorldPay and CyberSource come right out of the box. It's great, great news for a lot of international retailers. Um, and overall, you know, the marketplace is growing. So Magento has, you know, launched their marketplace uh, for M2. Um, that was a big reveal at Magento Imagine this year. Um, and they redid this and made it a lot more stringent to get on the program. So uh, if you're interested, I, I definitely urge you to go look around. You can see some of the, the partner extensions that they have there, featured extensions that people are using. And ultimately, the goal here is to make it that if the extension hits this marketplace, it's going to be a quality product. Whereas with the Connect Store, um, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot in terms of, you know, is it going to be quality or is it not? So I think the last number that I heard was, you know, 250 plus extensions for Magento 2, um, which is far less than Magento 1, but it's a big, you know, it's a big improvement from where we were about six months ago. So that, that's only good news. And from my perspective and the SI that I work for, you know, ultimately the reason we haven't recommended Magento 2 as much is because the integrations haven't been there to this point. Um, now that's catching on and people are starting to develop a lot more extensions and port those over to Magento 2. So I think over the next, you know, three to six months, you'll see a lot more action here uh, on the Magento 2 uh, implementation side. And, and lastly, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, how people are downloading the product. Um, for what I understand, there's more than 228,000 downloads of Magento Enterprise and Magento Community Edition uh, of version 2. There's 800 plus active sites uh, on the web, and there's 100 trained solutions partners. So there's people that are jumping on board, that are learning the platform, and really understand you know, how to leverage it for your business. So hopefully that's a good amount of information for you in terms of just a starting place on how Magento 2 got started. Um, and we'll be diving into the platform, uh, into the actual admin panel to show you some cool new stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, subscribe to this video if you like the information and we'll be moving forward into the actual product to give you some tips, tricks, and how to you know, grow your business on Magento 2. Thanks guys, this is Mike and I'll see you soon.